Okay, in this third and final video on this uh, painterly style for the still life, we're going to take it to completion. So when we finished part two, we were here. We had uh, did our major blocking in. Okay, we developed a little bit more uh, certain objects like the apple and, and the goblet and the ball. This is as yet undone as is uh, the bears and the background. So I'm going to start by talking about the background. Uh, we began by just putting in the folds, by looking at the lights and darks, so that we can get some sense of form and shadow happening on the material. So there's, there's two ways to do this. Once you've done this, you then superimpose the pattern on top. But what you want to do is make a decision. Do you want to, uh, if you look at all of the shapes, all of the patterns on here, the flowers, the yellow petals, they have, there's a lighter version that's in the light, and there's a darker version that's in the shadow. Okay, so you can either paint the light on everything and then add the dark later or put the dark version on everything and add the light later. And I recommend that because it keeps it simple and organized. If you keep mixing your colors as you go along, by the time you get over here, your yellows and whites and greens are going to be very different from the yellows, whites and greens over here. So what I chose to do in this particular exercise is do the light version of everything and just put it wherever you see it and ignore the shadows 100%. So if we go to the next slide, you can see it. Okay, everything's at full bright saturation. And then once it's dry, you mix up darker versions of the greens, the yellows, and the whites. Okay, so we look here, we've got this bright green in the light and bright green in the shadow. Uh, bright yellow here, bright yellow here. Everything is the same all the way throughout. And then I chose to put the darks on top so we get something like this. So now you see this green has got a dark version and a light version. This is now a darker yellow than that. Um, these whites, all I've done is put on a darker version of white than what was originally there. So let me just go back and show you. So you see that's full white. And then we go to this. I've got a, my mixed shadow version. Now what helps this work really well is if you get objects, uh, patterns that transition from light to dark, like this green here. So if you look over here, you'll see there's this white flower. If I go back, the whole thing's white. But if I make part of it dark and follow the line of the shadow, then it becomes very convincing. Same here. This line cutting through of the shadow, which separates the lighter yellows from the darker yellows, really helps to carry that illusion. So even if you have to uh, engineer a few places, kind of make it up in a, in a few places, uh, go for it. Uh, you can see here I've got these two yellows and I've got a shadow line running through them, but those yellows don't exist, okay? I just put them in as you know, part of the pattern because at the end of the day, we're not actually copying this picture. Well, we're creating a freehand interpretation pretty close to it, but we're not getting too bogged down. And then what you'll find is when you work, uh, my suggestion is always tend towards exaggeration. So again, if you look at the apple and the goblet, they're much more exaggerated in terms of contrast and color than the original objects. And we'll, we'll see how this plays out at the end. So I've also worked on the bear, okay? So we have the basics. We have purples working in here. Uh, as the basis of our shadows, some oranges because it's reflecting the, the red orange. We see that in the shadow here. We see it also over here. So I'm just taking it along to the next level and then to an almost finished level and put the little bow on also. So we're moving it along and the next detail will be, Okay, so you have taken it in a different light. It's all a bit more orange, so that's interesting. I put the details on the eyes, a little bit more detail here. This bear has become a little bit more resolved. Uh, you can see that this object now, if I go back here, it's kind of basic and moving forward, uh, it's getting more of the details. And then it's just a progressive uh, step of moving forward with the details. Okay, so then here, it's pretty close to done. But if you look at the shadows here, they're pretty strong, okay? This is in shadow, but mine is popping out of shadow. So one thing you can do with the painterly technique, which we also do with the linear technique, is employ glazes. So I could have done all this in glazes, all of these shade, shadows and glazes, and that's always a fun exercise. But what I'm gonna just do here is just work on this bear with glazing. So I'm gonna glaze a dark on the top and on the side of the face, and in various parts of the bear in the next slide. So you see that. So now that's sunk back into the darkness. 
that ear is now hidden under the dark shadow there. And I'll go back and you'll see the difference. So it's pretty uh, contrasting. We can see it sticking out. It's kind of in a shadow. And then if we go forward, now it's much darker. Now to highlight this effect, the strength of the shadow, without darkening the shadow, in the next and final slide, I'm going to just lighten those parts of the bear, especially those that are next to the shadow. So we see in this next slide, by just simply putting more lights in here, this barrier between the light and the dark is much stronger. So now the, the it looks like there's a, <clears throat> sorry, a cast shadow falling out over the bear. If I go back to the glazing, another thing that I did, whoops, here we go, sorry, is see how crisp and clear a lot of these shapes are. And over here, they're kind of foggy. So I put a glazy yellow on top of that, and you'll see there just kind of soften them and added more details on the side. So it does take time. Uh, you are building it up but you're, you're also leaving a lot of marks that work. And so in the final version, again, we can see here is something I've left. And I'm gonna finish just by zooming in to this, if I can. There we go. And we can see all the brushwork that's happening here in the goblet. And like I said, this actually isn't in the picture, but it works with the picture, okay? The apple, again, is very, very strong contrasting the reflections and the lights and darks, so I've exaggerated those, and then left a lot of the blue underpainting uh, happening around the bear. And so what that does is just heightens your image. Oops, let's fill this up better. There we go, and gives you, in my opinion, oh, sorry, a much more interesting picture than the original.